Welcome to Watercolor Coral Reef Collage Part 2. If you are watching this, you should have already completed Part 1, which means you've painted your background water, you've painted your sand, and you've created your coral. Now for this video, we're going to work on creating our fish, and then from there, we're going to move on to the video Part 3, which will be for actually putting them all together. For this video, you can choose any fish you want, so it does not need to be the ones that I chose. I'd actually love if it wasn't all the ones that I chose. Uh, pull up some realistic photos of those fish from Google, from one of your search engines, and then really look at drawing and painting that fish realistically. This should be the longest portion of time that you spend is working on these fish. This is the most eye-catching, this is the focal point, the subject matter of your collage. So spend most of your time here in this video in working on this portion of your collage and you'll be happy with the results. Let's get started. So we're going to start by sketching out our fish. We want to sketch these out very, very lightly because you're going to be watercolor painting over this and that pencil will show up underneath that watercolor because watercolor by its nature is extremely transparent. And so I want you to make sure that you're not pressing down really hard. You may even want to sketch out lightly and then erase it where you can just see the faint outline of that pencil left and then use that faint outline in order to paint. But you really don't want to have these dark pencil lines because you're going to be frustrated when you can't paint over them and make them disappear. I want you to draw at least three fish. Google and find fish that live in coral reefs and pick three different types of fish to create for your reef. Make sure that you're paying attention to the size and that all three will fit easily on your background. That you don't draw one ginormous fish that takes up a whole sheet of paper and then you don't have room for your other two fish. So really think about proportion when you're choosing what size and what types of fish. If you choose a fish that's really large and another one that's much smaller than that fish, try to draw them and paint them in proportion to one another. Don't draw them the same size if one is a shark and one's a little beta fish. So really pay attention, do some research on coral reefs. Pay attention to what fish you're choosing and what the size of those fish are. Okay, the first fish I'm gonna paint is gonna be my clownfish. So it's gonna be black, white, and orange. Um, it's got a little bit of some blue undertones that we're gonna play around with in a minute. We're gonna start with a much smaller brush than what I did my background with. So hopefully you've got a small brush with you. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water. I'm not gonna place it on my background first. I'm gonna start with it in my paint. So I'm gonna pick up some paint. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of trace along where that's gonna be. And I wanna put down a pretty thick coat, which means that I'm gonna pick up a very little bit of water, only what I need to activate the paint. And I'm gonna look at the direction in which my brush strokes go. So the clownfish has this fanned out tail and so I really want all of my brush strokes to go in that direction to make it have the texture of that fanned out tail. So I don't want to be painting this way, that would never make sense. I want to be painting out towards. If you notice, I started adding a little bit of red in order to make that orange a darker, more vibrant color. I started mixing a little bit of orange and red together. Also going to be very careful about this next step, but I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of brown in order to create this shadow that we know is there. So on my clownfish, there should be a little bit of dimension. He's not really flat. So I picked up a little bit of brown.
and I may have to wait until some of this water dries and go back over it. If I'm really careful, I can pick up a tiny bit of black just to create this little shadow that should be underneath. On the fin, there should be a little bit of one right above. I'm going to go ahead and finish my orangey red color. So I'm going to come in and put a few more finishing touches now on this, but I want to point out to you guys how very little water I used with the black in order to make it bold. And the black was one of the last things I did because it will bleed. You need to make sure that this orange or whatever colors you're doing around the black are completely dry before you begin working with black. Otherwise your black is going to run all into your other colors and ruin your painting and you're going to have to start it from being real frustrated. So just be really careful, it's fine to use black. Um, I just really want you guys to realize how overpowering it is. You know that it's going to be your strongest color. And so it is going to just be very overpowering. So now I'm going to move in and I've mixed just a little bit of black with my orange. Just to be able to create some value on the bottom of my fish. I just mix just a tiny bit of black with that orange. I'm being real careful not to overpower it. but we know that the tops and bottom of the fish need to be a little bit darker so that it starts to look like it's got some 3D to it. Um, just kind of let that creep up. Let that darker color creep around. You can always go in with a little bit of lighter orange and layer. Just be real careful not to let that black bleed. So I'm not losing a whole lot of water. I'm doing much more of a dry technique where I'm only using enough water to activate the paint. I'm not using water like I was when we did our background and it was really dark. Um, it will, can and will, ruin your piece and you will be very frustrated. And I understand because I've ruined plenty of pieces. Um, you may really want to practice this on a different sheet of paper or draw several fish on some good cardstock so that you can paint several and use whichever one you think looks best. I don't want you guys to get frustrated spending all of your time on one fish and then at the very end the black bleeding and messing you up. I'm go in with a little bit of water and a tiny bit of black and kind of meld in the tops and bottoms so that I've got 
that white starts to look a little more realistic and starts to look like it's got some value to it. Just be really careful not to let it bleed all the way through. So it's smaller the brush the better. And then I can always go back and tighten up some of these lines. leave that one be and let it dry um, I'm not super stressed actually I need a little bit in this front fin and a bit of that gray white color right in here I'm not stressed about where I went outside of the line um, because I'm gonna cut this fish out because we're doing a collage so I'm just gonna let this dry for now and I'm gonna move on to my next fish For my next fish, but it's mostly yellow, so I kind of get an easy start. I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire fish yellow. Except for, actually no, no, no except for. I'm going to do the whole thing yellow to begin with. And then when it dries, just like I did with my um, background kind of just setting it to the side when it dries we're gonna go in and put all of our details but since this is a really bright vibrant yellow fish we're gonna go ahead and get most of it yellow Remember, I'm not super worried about the outside because I am going to cut these out in order to use them for my collage so I'm not super concerned about getting in on the edges I just want to make sure that I get a really vibrant bright color here remember the more paint less water will get you the brighter colors okay so I'm gonna leave that one for a few minutes move on to my third fish my third fish I'm going to get a medium sized brush again if you don't have a bunch of different sizes use what you have um, but I'm gonna get kind of medium sized and it is mostly blue there is some black and some white and a little bit of orange so I'm gonna start with my blue and it kind of goes at an angle across here and most of this one is blue and so I'm going to and his texture on his fins goes up and down so, so I'm kind of outlining it and then pulling that paint up and down to sort of go with the texture around his fins I'm going to leave this part white because there is some white on there and the back half of him is actually an orange color with some black in there so that's really all of the blue should try to get as dark as I can and I'm also going to leave that to dry while that is drying I can work on the orange and yellow that is on his fin so the very tip of his fin is actually yellow so I'm gonna go back to that yellow that I used for my real vibrant fish and the very tip over here is yellow the fun part about doing the coral fish and the coral reef fish is that they are really bright and so these watercolors work great to bring them to life and make them pop a little bit. He's got just a smidgen of yellow over here but not much. Some little hints of yellow. Little hints of yellow over here. And the rest of him is a bright red orange color and it's going to be more red orange than the um, clownfish that is sitting right next to him so I'm going to use mostly red I'm 
kind of place it down and then make sure I'm pulling it down and in so that it's mimicking what his actual fish or actual scales are doing. Then I can go back and pick up a little bit of orange and kind of mix some orange in with that red because I don't want it to be only red. It does have kind of an orange tint to it. Keep kind of changing back and forth with whichever brush makes the most sense. I do want to be really careful not to let this blue bleed into this orange. So for now I'm going to be real careful to just get right up against it but not actually on top of it yet. careful here. Just going right up against my blue, but I really don't want to let them run into each other. It does not make a pretty color. So you're going to have to really take your time. Get a small brush. Go around it. See, so yeah, I let that bleed just a little bit. Which I was trying to avoid. this brush with no paint on it and clean up where I let this run. So I can just put a little bit of water and kind of start to mop up a little bit. I can even take So what I'm going to do is let that completely dry before I go back in and fix it. So I'm going to go back with my black and go ahead and do this part. Remember you can't have too much water with your black or it gets runny. water in there so it's a much lighter black um, light, light gray and do this center part of the mouth and the outline of the mouth and the rest I'm gonna have to give it a few minutes and let it dry and then I'll come back and finish it shortly Okay, so now I can get back to this fish because she is dried enough. And these fish have a little bit of a um, odd shaped blue on them. So I'm gonna kind of sketch that out over the yellow. And it kind of 
tilt it back around something like this it's about what that blue looks like and then right in here is black because that's where his eye is so I'm gonna go ahead and it's a pretty dark blue actually I'm gonna I want that to come out a little bit more it's pretty dark blue so now this yellow is completely dry I'm gonna take some blue and a little bit of black and what I'm gonna do is just use I'm gonna turn this so that you can see it I'm just gonna use the edge of my palette to put the blue down and then to go pick up some black and I'm gonna mix it a lot like I would normal paint We're looking for a dark blue color Once you finish painting all of your fish, I want you to dry, let them dry 100% and then you're going to very carefully cut them out. Make sure you're cutting really close around them. I don't want to see any of the white paper and if you need to trim off just enough to get rid of some of those pencil lines, that's completely fine. Once they're cut out, you're going to go to the next video called Coral Reef Collage Part 3. Uh, it's going to be a much shorter video where we're going to put them all together and finish our collage. I'll see you there. Have fun and keep creating.